Good evening. And welcome to this service on the day that we as Christians call Good Friday, a day of remembrance of what God has done for us in Christ, and a day where we gather with believers around the world to commemorate the sacrifice of our God through His Son. A couple of logistical announcements as we begin this service. Uh, One, we'll be finishing the service with a celebration of the Lord's Supper, and that's prepared for all who are believers in Jesus Christ who have made a profession of faith in in a Christian church. And if you are gluten intolerant or are not able to, to process gluten, there are gluten-free uh, pieces of bread outside the sanctuary. And if you need that, just maybe raise your hand and usher can grab you a piece. Otherwise, we'll have bread here for the rest. And the way we're going to do that this evening is we're going to invite people at the end to come and to take a strip of bread and to dip it in the juice and to take communion that way. If you're not able to do that, there also will be communion served in the pew and we'll have uh, elders who will be doing that. So we have different ways of celebrating is together we celebrate the unity we have through Christ. As we do this service, I also just want to frame, if you're not familiar with a service like this, we Reformed people love what Jesus said when he told us to love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and strength. But Jesus added to that, love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And as Reformed people, on a day like Good Friday, we love to love God with our minds. And so many of you who grew up in a church know about the big words of the faith like atonement and justification and sanctification. We like to understand things. But the service today is really not about understanding with our mind. It's about loving him with our heart and soul and strength. And so the way that this service is going to go is we are going to hear the gospel story as presented in scripture in its pure form. And as we hear it, we're also going to respond in song And as we sing, we're also going to see that story played out as the lights in the sanctuary dim, reminding us of the darkness that descended when Christ died. And we're going to finish having heard and seen by also tasting the sacrifice of our Savior. This is a service of experience as we enter into the sacrifice of Jesus Christ for us. And with those things before us tonight, I'd like to open in prayer. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence tonight. And Lord, more than that, we also thank you for the forsakenness that Jesus experienced on this day for us, so that today we could come into the darkness and hear this story and respond in song, and in the end, taste and see that you are good, and that your goodness was poured out through the blood of Jesus Christ for us. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would move mightily through the service and the songs tonight, that each of us would leave this place in silence with hearts hungry to return on Easter Sunday to celebrate your resurrection power in Christ and through him in us. Father, we ask that you would do these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, as we begin this service, we're going to do so quietly, and our call to worship is going to come to us, and I invite you to remain seated for that. And at the end of that call to worship, we're going to hear a song which again invites us to begin to reflect on the sufferings of Christ. La Via Dolorosa, the way of suffering. Tell me who would choose to suffer. Plenty of suffering here to go around. Pain, grief, rejection, loneliness, bullying, abuse, derision, disease, death. None of us immune, all of us sinners, except the immutable Son of Man. He chose the Via Dolorosa. Only he could. Only he would bear all our misery and loss on rough wooden beams of a Roman cross. Ugly method of torture, cruel means of execution for common criminals. What crime deserved piercing? His uncommon love for us pierced his magnanimous heart spilled gracious agape love to wash our dirt clean away. His Via Dolorosa is our way home to the Father who turned away from our hideous sins born on the bleeding back of his beloved son. Shadows fell on his forsaken and disfigured form when he descended into hell Praise God, now we will never be forsaken. We need not smell the sulfur or feel the heat. 
Let us kiss the nail-printed feet of our Redeemer Rescuer who walked the cobbled streets of the Via Dolorosa uphill to Calvary.
Friends, we're going to walk that road, that painful way to Calvary this evening. As we do, just a reminder, the songs of all of that we'll be singing are in this program. There will be nothing on the screen tonight. And so I don't know if the ushers can hear me, but I'd like, if you need a program, and you will need one, please raise your hand when we're doing our mutual greeting, and we'll get you programs to make sure everyone can sing along tonight. But as we, as we do that, I might invite you to stand for our opening greeting. Friends, we read in Scripture that no greater love has anyone than this than that they lay down their life for their friends. Today we celebrate that love of God and our greeting reminds us of that love. To those who are loved by God the Father and kept safe through Jesus Christ the crucified one, grace, mercy, and peace be to each of you. From God our Father, through the Lord Jesus, amen. As God's people gathered here tonight, would you please greet each other warmly, especially guests with us. And again, if you need one, please raise your hand and we'll get you a worship order. And with our God before us, let's open together this service singing number 386 in our Grace Altar hymnals, Ah, Holy Jesus, How Have You Offended? Again, the words are in our program, but you also can get that from your hymn book. We're going to sing stanzas one through three, number 386. The cross of Christ is an eternal reminder of God's unconditional love. Tonight we stand in the shadow of the cross.
on the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, Go into the Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, the teacher says, my appointed time is near. I'm going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your home. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer, for I tell you, I will not eat again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This is a new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Remember me. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. Surely not I, Lord. The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. 
the Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to the man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. Yes, it is you. Later that evening, Jesus told his disciples, This very night you will all fall away on account of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, Even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. I tell you the truth, this very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the other disciples said the same. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little further, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, everything is possible for you. Take me up from me, yet not what I will, but what you will.
He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. Jesus returned from his place of prayer to find his disciples sleeping. Get up, for my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs. Judas came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you came here to do. Immediately, they stepped forward and seized Jesus. He said to the crowd, Have you come with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I sat in the courts of the temple, teaching, and yet you did not arrest me. But all of this has taken place so that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all of the disciples deserted Jesus and fled.
Then seizing Jesus, the crowd led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. But when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, This man was with him. But he denied it. Woman, I don't know him. A little later, someone else saw him and said, You also are one of them. Man, I am not. About an hour later, another asserted, Certainly, this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter replied, Man, I don't know what you are talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And Peter went outside and wept bitterly. The next morning, the council of the elders, both the chief priests and the teachers of the law, met together as Jesus was brought before them. They said to him, If you are the Messiah, tell us. Jesus answered, If I tell you, you will not believe. Then they asked, Are you then the Son of God? He replied, You are correct in saying I am. What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Then they brought Jesus before Pilate. But Pilate said to the chief priests and crowds, I find no basis for a charge against this man. 
but they were insistent. Pilate, after learning that Jesus was under Herod's jurisdiction, sent him to Herod. But finding nothing for which to convict him, Herod sent him back to Pilate. Finally, Pilate said to Jesus' accusers, I have examined this man in your presence and have not found him guilty of any of your charges. Neither has Herod, for he has sent him back to us. He has done nothing to deserve death. Then they all shouted, Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! The shouts of the crowd eventually prevailed. Pilate finally granted their demand. He released the one who had been imprisoned for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over to them as they had desired. When they had arrived at the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there along with the criminals, one on his right, one on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. One of the criminals kept deriding Jesus. Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, do you not fear God? We have been condemned justly and are getting what we deserve, but this man has done nothing wrong. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, Today you will be with me in paradise.
It was now about noon, and darkness swept over the whole land. The curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. Arimathea, a prominent member of the council, who was himself waiting for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Pilate was surprised to hear that he was already dead. Summoning the centurion, he asked him if Jesus had already died. When he learned from the centurion that it was so, he gave the body to Joseph. So Joseph brought some linen cloth, took down the body, wrapped it in the linen, and placed it in a tomb cut out of rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. I looked up and I saw my Lord a dying. I looked up and I saw my Lord a dying on the cross. I looked up and I saw.
Brothers and sisters in Christ, this is a holy moment where we have walked this road of pain and shadow to the cross, and now as we lean into Easter, we with celebration come to taste and to see that our God is good. To remind you of how this will go tonight, after some words and a prayer, I'm going to be inviting others are going to come up, and we're going to have a station on this aisle, a station in the front and the middle, another station in the middle of the center alley and then another station on the side to the north and they'll, you'll be welcome to come when the music starts to take a piece of bread and you'll be told to be reminded of the body of Christ given for you. You'll dip that in the juice and be reminded of the blood of Christ shed for you then you can take that and go back to your seat and if you are unable to come forward or you prefer to sit in your seat, that is okay. And friends, in this holy moment we celebrate in this way because of what God commands us. Hear these words from Scripture. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you, that on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and he broke it and he said, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And on that same good night, 
He took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim my death until I come again. Friends, this is God's promise. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, on this Good Friday, we thank you for the journey that you have taken us on through scripture and song to reflect on Christ's life his suffering, and his death. Father, as we obey now and remember these things in the light of Easter that will shine soon, we do so with thanksgiving and with joy as your forgiven people. Father, we pray that by your Holy Spirit, once again through this bread and cup, you would nourish us and set us apart for Christ. For we pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us all to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, God has prepared this table for all who are truly sorry for their sins, for all who believe in Jesus Christ as their only Savior. All such are, are invited now to come with gladness to the table of our Lord. For Christ, on this good night, took the bread and broke it and said, this is my body given for you. And he took the cup and said, this is the blood of the covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Come to the feast. Invite the elders out.
Friends, would you pray with me? Loving God, we thank you for the reminder of why this Friday is called good. Thank you that you have fed us in the sacrament, that you have united us with Christ, the crucified Savior, and that you have given us tonight a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. Gracious God, as you nourish us, fill us with your spirit so that we may share in Christ's death and also eagerly share in his resurrection on Easter morning and even the glory that will be ours when he comes again. Heavenly Father, thank you that you've united us with that crowd of saints around the world and across the ages that claims you as Lord and Savior. And we pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Friends, would you stand for our parting blessing? After the parting blessing, we will sing a song, Ah, Holy Jesus, How Have You Offended, number 386. We began with that. We'll end with stanza four. And then we invite you to leave reflecting on God's work of salvation in silence and to prepare your hearts to come again on Sunday morning at 10 to celebrate the victory we have in Jesus. And with that before us, receive this blessing. Friends, may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, may he equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in you what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory now and forever. Amen.